Boxer is back. Well, kind of. Here in the top left, we have none other than the most important player in the history of StarCraft. Honestly, the most important player in the history of esports, Slayer's Boxer. I was taken aback when this was discovered. Uh, apparently, he was actually streaming and playing some StarCraft. Uh, and someone snagged the ID, found the ladder account, and now we have some boxer replays. Uh, this is incredibly exciting. Okay, so let me just talk about him for a moment here. Slayer's Boxer uh, kind of made StarCraft Esports a reality. He is probably the most highly respected uh, esports athlete of all time. He basically won just about everything. He was the game's first bone draw, right? So he won just about everything at the beginning of StarCraft 1. This was a time where there was very little money. Boxer used his own money to fund other players, teams, etc. He basically sacrificed infinity <laughs> to get everyone uh, to be able to continue to play and help jumpstart esports. Uh, he was the best player in the world for many, many years. Okay? He invented many, many things with Terran. Uh, and he actually, one thing that people forget is he has one of the longest reigns as a strong player ever, right? So he was he was the first bone droid. He was, he was winning tournaments super, super early on. And I believe the last time he got to a finals was maybe 2004, which is incredibly deep into StarCraft history. Uh, of course, he ended up marrying uh, a famous Korean actress, became a poker pro, played StarCraft II professionally for a while. I mean, the stories, the lists of his accomplishments go on and on and on. Uh, a true legend, a true legend of the game. Uh, so, yes, I'm very excited here to be casting some boxer. His opponent going to be someone that we cast plenty of times on this channel. It is DeWalt. Uh, so... I, I do need to line up a couple things for you guys here. Now, Boxer has played a, a really fair amount. Uh, and he's he's pretty good, it seems. Uh, but DeWalt is going to be pretty heavily favored here. Okay, DeWalt is like a 2600 Protoss player. Very, very strong. Can beat ASL players. Uh, not with winning records, but uh, with some amount of regularity. Right? Boxer, looking at his accounts, he is about 2200 MMR. Maybe, maybe slightly lower, but right, right in that area. Uh, and that's good. That's quite strong, right? Uh, do not forget that boxer. He's actually even older than me. I believe he is, if I'm not mistaken, one year older than me. It, it could be two. It could be two. So th that would, that would put him at 41 or 42 years old. Uh, so to play Terran at that level, still very impressive, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking that it's going to be a very easy game. For him here against DeWalt. Uh, excited to see what it looks like though, because I haven't actually seen any of his games uh, in about three years. About three years ago, I saw him play, and he was uh, a similar MMR, maybe maybe 100 MMR higher than he is here uh, when he was playing then. But the MMR has actually shifted downwards since then a little bit because the pros make so many new accounts. And smurf so much. Uh, but anyways, uh, enough of the introduction, guys. Welcome back to our Tosis cast. Hope that you are enjoying the games. I, I, I'm i more excited about this one than any I have been for a while. We see that DeWalt here is actually going one base robo. Now, the thing about Boxer is he has, like, everyone. Everyone knows Boxer and how he plays. Boxer is a micro-oriented player, a strategy-oriented player. He, even, uh, you know, late into his career in 2003, 2004, uh, he was coming up with, like, strats that people have never seen to trick people. His micro is still very top tier. But it's harder to see him go into a long macro game and make it work. Uh, that's just never really been his style. In fact, back when he was a top player, that really didn't exist. That really started coming out in around, I would say, 2004 four-ish we started really seeing macro start to dominate 
uh, and maybe even slightly, slightly earlier than that. Either way, right now we have a little bit of an FD push coming out from Boxer. He does start the command center behind. So this is actually a style from that era <laughs> that we're seeing, uh, which is, again, not that popular. I've talked about it a few times on the cast. Just generally, you can't get too much done with it. Uh, Protoss are too good with their Dragoon Micro. As you can see, he's got double mines here, so he can't really be chased. If you try to chase him here, he will make at least one of these mines hit, and that can ruin the day of these Dragoons. Now, looking back at DeWalt's base, he is getting an Observer. So when that Observer comes out, this is going to become very easy for him to plow through. And in fact, if Boxer is not very careful, this could turn bad quickly. Uh, if he ends up losing these siege tanks, he might lose the game immediately. So, all right, the, the Dragoons come up, snipe that mine, and, oh, he actually stops to get the SCV. He really, I feel like he needed here to uh, continue to push forward. Now, Boxer just takes the high ground, which is a good spot against four Dragoons. He absolutely can do that. But with two Gate Observer, we're going to have uh, DeWalt nonstop here making more and more, uh, uh, more Dragoons. Now... Boxer microing really, really well. Pulling back to the high ground. Keeping this pressure on very surprisingly. What am I even watching here? So he just took three tanks and killed four Dragoons and forced the other one back. I mean, the, the, the old man still got it. He's gone into a two factory play here. He does have his command center up. He's only down by four workers despite the fact that DeWalt got his nexus up quite a bit quicker than Boxer so we're actually seeing some very solid macro out of him as well two more factories get started so a four factory play with the speed upgrade coming still has three siege tanks oh I'm getting a, I'm getting a few chills here watching the emperor of Terran and the strength that he's showing us now DeWalt is playing super safe here he's going into reaver off two gate which is very normal but normally you make a third nexus instead of the third nexus he's going into a third gateway so this is going to give him so much army that he should be able to break whatever boxer tries to push with we'll see about that because this is a very fast four factories very very fast you can see he's skipping all defense we don't even have an engineering bay yeah, we literally don't have an academy, an engineering bay, an armory, nothing like that. He's literally spending all of his money right now on production. In fact, not even making SCVs at the moment. That might be because he's supply blocked, or it might not be. It's hard to say. Now, with the Reaver coming out, four tanks here, and we have six goons along with a Reaver and a Zealot. So look at this. Oh, my God. The Zealot gets pulled in, and he does turn to fight the Reaver. Great pullback there from Boxer, showing some fantastic micro dodging most of that scarab damage and look at this a run by on those vultures very very smart move here from boxer as well gets into the main base laying some mines down in the meantime his uh tanks running back the mines kind of slowing down these dragoons they aren't going to get there too quickly and look at this he's actually getting really reasonable damage right now now as that comes up and boxer is having a hard time uh microing both sides here but he does end up killing that Zalt, so we'll get a few more probes probably Back gets pulled all of these siege tanks. We have that uh, eBay going up as well. DeWalt starting to move forward. And they're within four workers. The Nexus, third Nexus just got started. Honestly, honestly looking at these positions. This is like slight advantage boxer. He needs some turrets up ASAP. His siege mode is actually hilariously not done yet. We're almost at nine minutes into the game. But of course, that's because he's been so, so aggressive. Great pullback there from Boxer. Uh, and look at that. Another pullback. Doesn't even cancel this turret. So he's... Uh, dude, it's good control. It's good, solid control here from Slayer's Boxer. Uh, now... He's going to get that missile turret down. He has some pretty well-placed turrets overall. He's very well defended at the moment. Plenty of siege tanks. Has a marine for that bunker. It's always good to have that bunker. It sucks up so much damage. We'll see if he actually puts anything in there. Looks like it did get turned around for a moment. More, uh, more depots on the way here for Boxer as well. Getting his academy finally. Only one add-on at the moment, which... I mean, you can play one add-on, and in fact, he only has one gas, so it kind of makes sense, but you can see that he's not really scaling towards the end game particularly well. What he is doing is keeping, like, a pretty even mid-game. They're within four workers of each other right now, uh, and in fact, he's only six army supply down. A very healthy number of siege tanks still laying some mines across the map. He sees the probes being transferred, so he has a good idea of the timing of everything. Now, if he can get a turret up, like, right here, this could turn into... 
a push that can actually maybe kill. Now, it comes up with those siege tanks, ends up getting one of those uh, reavers. This one drops out, throws that scarab down. And oh my god, look at this. DeWalt trying to break through, gets a big scarab hit there as well. And it does look like DeWalt should be able to clean the rest of this up. We'll see. Bring in his siege tanks forward, drops out that reaver once again, and will in fact push everything back. Now, DeWalt has three bases up in mining. We don't have the second gas. We don't have an armory. Okay, he is getting the second add-on now that he lost all those tanks. He realizes, uh-oh. We need a lot more tanks <laughs> to be able to play this game pretty evenly. One thing to mention is that this is only four gateways, a fifth one being added. So honestly, it's like, yeah, DeWalt, I would definitely put him very well ahead at this point, but it is not an impossible game. There's actually the one thing going very well for Boxer is that his production facilities are equal or better than what DeWalt has. So even though he's not like getting great upgrades, to scale into the late game, he's actually still able to basically make the same amount of supply as Dwal, or very close to it, right? And that's an important thing. This is actually like one of the big fundamental things you need to think about in StarCraft is keeping your army supply somewhere near your opponents. It doesn't have to be exact, but you have to have enough that you don't just get completely run over. So great production is available for Boxer. He's starting to remake some SCVs, trying to push here once again as well. We have a little bit of a run around here from DeWalt. Goes around the back side of this very tiny push. In fact, I wouldn't even call this a push. This to me looks more like a containment type of play, right? Like maybe he's setting this up and saying, okay, we're going to force you to run into mines. Maybe, maybe this is to set up taking his third base. I'm not entirely sure. Well, these Dragoons that went around the other way, it looks like he's going to go up here and try to flank. So he's bringing units from both sides to kill these Dragoons off. And the Dragoons, well, they do clear those tanks, but he is going to end up losing all of these Dragoons. So uh, Boxer will kill those off. He'll siege here on the high ground. I think DeWalt will back up from this here as well. Uh, and you can see now this game is starting to look a little bit rougher for Boxer than it has throughout the rest of this. Oh, God. I hate when this happens. I hate when that happens. Uh, but we do have a run by... Uh, and of course, what happened there was a reaver drop went in when we were watching the actual battles going on. So uh, Boxer did end up taking a little bit of damage in that main base. His SCV count didn't change that much. Uh, so I think he defended it reasonably well there as well. But yeah, right now with DeWalt being at 50 workers against 37, 37 is slightly less than a, a solid two base economy. You're really looking at 44 workers as like, let's say you're going to go all in on two base. You want 44 workers. Okay. Okay. So he's a little bit below that right now. He's got to remake. Uh, we see that third base going up. Kind of an interesting location, especially since he's taking here. This would actually be more easily defendable. So I'm interested to see why he's doing that and what, what the benefits are going to be. But anyways, the Reaver drop does come out into this main base. The Reaver is starting to put some damage down. Ooh. Mind drag helps to hit that siege shank, but looks like the siege shank will stay alive. Oh god, is all coming up right now. Ah, he's gonna kill him in that shot. And that is gonna leave one shot left on that reaver, which is super, super painful as well. DeWalt is setting up another base here. We have had a few vulture run-ins, uh, but doesn't really amount to that much damage, to be honest. DeWalt's reaver still up here, causing mayhem and havoc. Uh, getting to be kind of a tough position. Now, the Reaver, well, he's remaking the Scarab. He's going to get one more shot, it looks like. Uh, gets one more SCV. But really, at this point, any damage you're causing is really, really, really strong. Drops the Reaver out again. And in fact, just going to go for more. Oh, my God. He gets like five SCVs with that first shot. Absolute insanity. Going to try to get another one. Okay, well, ends up losing it, but kills a couple Vultures. Definitely very worth it once again. The supply differential going massively, massively into DeWalt's favor at this point. DeWalt going across the map with this group of Dragoons. Boxer's third base a little bit in trouble right now. Oof. Still only mining from that one gas. Still producing what he can off of the six factories. You know, he's got this kind of forward position. But right now, DeWalt walking up across the map. Uh, he is going to go ahead and attack into here. And we'll see, like, he... he Boxer, here's the thing. Boxer is like, okay, he has this setup. It looks like there was some Zealot bombs going on here, but he has this setup, which kind of keeps units out. 
uh, away from here. But this area, he's really got nothing going on. And really, you can set your rally point some up here, make like a single turret, and you're going to be all right if you're holding that position, right? So would like to see him take a more forward position on the map. In the meantime, DeWalt sending more probes down to this third base location. Uh, you know, the, the worker count is very weak for Boxer right now, unfortunately. So his macro is suffering a bit, and DeWalt is starting to really explode as far as his macro goes. We have a lot of Zelts coming out, a lot of Dragoons coming out, uh, and we'll see if Boxer can get anything done with this. He decides to push in once again, and not going super, super well. Does start to push up, uh, and you know, the Dragoons, they are all going to end up dying here, that's for sure, but uh, they trade well enough, right? And that is, that is a bit of an issue. Looks like we do have... Uh, a little bit of harassment going on over here. Boxer having a hard time getting that mining. Looks like we had a storm drop up here as well. DeWalt kind of all over the place. And even though Boxer is getting up to the choke once again, uh, you know, this is this is probably like the end of Boxer's aggression. I don't think he's going to be able to get another army up here. I don't think he's going to be able to really reinforce at this point. Everything kind of being blown up. Uh you know, it's it does look like DeWalt has done enough at this point that there's very little chance for Boxer to have any sort of comeback. Uh, you know, obviously, he's still got plenty of mineral patches, but this is the type of situation in which DeWalt can just start to expand everywhere on the map. You can see Boxer with almost nothing left over. Uh, he's trying to clear out what's left in his base, but obviously his supply is down to where it was 13 minutes ago, uh, <laughs> which is right around when you have these types of unit numbers. Uh, so, you know, it looks like these vultures still rallied out. DeWalt gonna eat them up as they come in and not a pretty finish to the game, I think. But we should be seeing a GG probably pretty soon uh, as there's just so few units left over here for Boxer. Trying to lay a few mines out there as well. Block any more of those drops that are coming in. DeWalt pulling back a little bit. And, well, I mean, I guess I guess Boxer's going to reset up. He does have three command centers. And, you know, I guess if he gets this down, if DeWalt plays too passively or something, maybe he can get towards a max supply. But realistically, not going to happen. GG is called. Okay, let's talk about this game just for a moment, okay? Because I want to I wanna mention a few things. First off, DeWalt is extremely, extremely good. Right. And Boxer being an older player that isn't like he's played. He's played a fair amount of games. Like, for instance, this particular account uh, has about 100 games on it right now. Uh, and still, he's he's a good mid A rank Terran, which is very, very strong still. Uh, obviously, he looked a little bit outclassed, but I would like to say that in the early game, he did have some really interesting things. Right. He did this FD push. If I could just jump back in the in the replay for a moment. Okay, this is a very old build. This is a build that was popularized around 2004, right? And Boxer was active up until, like, dude, he was active forever. Like, they literally, when he had to go to military service, he was so important that they made an Air Force team for him. They literally made a branch of the army that was, like, having an esports team so that Boxer could continue his career. Uh, I mean, that's that's how important he was. But this is a very old build, right? So even though Boxer was active into like 2007, 2008, he was still playing some. Uh, you know, this this build was from about 2004. Definitely isn't popular anymore. So it's an FD Terran that's FD fake double. So fake two factory. You make it look like it's two factory because you're attacking with the Marine tank Vulture. Uh, but again, this slows down your command center. So you can see this command center gets started. The Nexus, well, honestly, he went Robo before Nexus. Uh, a regularly timed Nexus is around 3 minutes and 15 seconds, okay? So, uh, and with a 75-second build time, this would already be done. And this isn't actually going to kill this. But it can put pressure on and make your opponent play in a certain way. And if we just, I'm going to just speed this up for a minute to just show you what I'm looking at here, right? So, he's putting heavy pressure on these two mines are to make it so that if this tries to chase, this is where Boxer can actually win the game. If it's a less experienced player, the player may chase this. You may say, well, four goons wrecks this. So they run up and then they hit these mines and suddenly you kill all the goons and 
there's nothing left, right? <laughs> and you and you can win the game. So he's putting this pressure on. He's offering mistakes to DeWalt that DeWalt does not bite onto because he's a 2600 player. He goes into the second factory. He's skipping because he can see the units that are coming out. He knows he doesn't need anything like an engineering bay. Just to make this clear, if it was a quick reaver drop, you would make the engineering bay right now. But he's getting the intel as the observer comes out, right? So look at this. The observer comes out, doesn't need anything, pulls back onto this high ground, right? And he's just, he's targeting with everything onto single goons. Third tank comes out. He knows exactly what he can fight against. Look at that. Targets the weakened goon, targets the other weakened goon. This time, that was a little mistake. If he had targeted that one first, it would have been slightly better. But you can see that he's still got these micro tricks. He's utilizing map terrain. These are things from Boxer's time, things that he's strong at. What we did end up seeing was he was good at keeping pressure on. He was good at the micro. He was good at deciding how to take engagements. But the macro at home fell off, right? It was not the greatest macro at home. He kept up on SCVs for a bit. We didn't see really an armory go up. Uh, you know, we didn't see like a regular progression into the later game. So what I would say is, yeah, he looks... He, there's certain aspects of his play that look good. There's certain aspects that you can tell this is why he's not in S rank. Uh, but honestly, he's boxer. I think if he really put effort in, he could get basically as high as he wants because he is a legend. Anyways, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this game. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know if you made it to the end of this cool game of Boxer versus DeWalt.